Do you ever feel overwhelmed by the ever-changing world of technology? Tech It Out can help make some sense of it all. Breaking down geek speak into street speak, technology columnist, author, and TV personality Mark Saltzman covers consumer technology each week for every listener. Mark tackles the latest news, reviews, and how-tos to help you understand what's hot, what's not, and why. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Tech It Out. This is episode 110. We have a great show planned for you this weekend. And I'll remind you about our awesome contest with Hotels.com in a moment. That's where we're giving away a $250 gift card. This is the third of eight weeks that we're doing that. So you can redeem that for a free night or two at a hotel of your choice through Hotels.com. Again, I'll tell you more about that momentarily. But first, on the show, we're going to talk with Western Digital in a moment about their new G-Technology Armor ATD portable hard drive. It's a new rugged drive. Intel will stop by on the show to talk about buying a back-to-school PC. And on a related note, I'll share some of my favorite back-to-school tech on this show. And Hotels.com will join us this hour as well. And speaking of Hotels.com, here's a little more info on that giveaway. It's running until the end of September, where every week someone will win a $250 Hotels.com gift card to put towards any hotel you want through the Hotels.com website or app. Here's how to be eligible to win. And it's open to anyone in the U.S age 18 and older all you have to do is as follows go to twitter and follow hotels.com type a sentence on why you could use a getaway in a hotel and include the hashtag tech it out that's it a name will be randomly drawn i'll announce it on the show next week and on social media too and if you want to read the full terms and conditions for this giveaway it's on my website marksaltzman.com that's mark with a c s-a-l-t-z-m-a-n.com good luck let's kick off the show if there's one thing i can't stress enough to anyone who uses a computer is the importance of backing up your files now many listeners can relate to that awful feeling knowing that your laptop has become lost or stolen or damaged and you didn't back up your important info ahead of time. Maybe you got a nasty virus or there was a power surge or any number of things that can prevent you from accessing your stuff. This is especially important for content creators on the go, like photographers and videographers who need a reliable backup solution in the field. And so now we're going to learn about the new super rugged G Technology Armor ATD external hard drive from Western Digital. Joining us on the line is Christina Garza, Senior Manager of Global Product Marketing at G Tech technology, a Western digital brand. Welcome to the show, Christina. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Awesome. So let's start right from the top. What is the Armor ATD drive? It sounds durable with having the word Armor in the name. So please tell us all about it. Yes, it's definitely durable. It's um, our rugged durable all-terrain portable hard drive. Um, the whole point of this, our objective was to deliver an ultra-reliable, incredibly durable portable drive that could go everywhere with you, survive your um, adventure photography shoots. If you're an avid road warrior traveling the subways, always on the go on planes, tossing your bag around, we needed to ensure that we created a hard drive that was going to survive all of that type of adventure that you take it on. Mm, okay. Does ATD stand for alternative? terrain drive. That's very clever. It does indeed. Yes. <laughs> awesome. We, we understand the value that photographers, videographers, and creators put on their, their media, their footage, and their photos. So we take it very seriously when we engineer our products to make sure that we can keep all of that high value uh, content protected. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. So this drive isn't just for those, I don't know, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, but braving the New York subway could be just as demanding, let's say, on your gear. Uh, so this is also for sort of, let's call it urban life, the, this, to withstand the bumps and grinds of everyday life. That's correct. You know, we all know how it is when we're traveling around, bumping into people, dropping your bag. Um, all of those things are real life scenarios that we need to make sure your content is protected from. Got it. All right. So the Armor ATD external hard drive is a portable drive, meaning, and I think this is a distinction Western Digital uses, if it's a portable drive, that means you don't have to plug it into the wall for power. It just gets the power from the laptop itself. And it's just built more durable. I mean, is it some hardware here that we should chat about? 
Yes, absolutely. And it is bus powered, meaning it does get the power from your actual computer laptop uh, versus into the wall. So you're correct with that. Uh, but what we did with this drive versus our other external hard drives um, that are considered portable as well, we um, engineer it with a strong aluminum enclosure. So you can, when you have this product in your hand, you can feel how tough it is and how durable, durable it is when you squeeze it. So that strong aluminum enclosure is going to protect everything inside of it um, if you accidentally drop it from you know, off the table or you drop your bag. Um, it also has a very tough, grippable rubber bumper so that when you are handling it or it is placed on the desk or on your computer, it's not going to easily slide off. Mm -hmm. In addition, one thing we add is shock protection inside the actual drive. And so we add a couple extra features inside to make sure that um, there's just that added layer of shock protection if the drive unfortunately does fall. Mm -hmm. um, and so that gives it a triple layer protection between the inside shock protectors, the aluminum enclosure, as well as the grippable rubber bumper to help protect it. Ah, thanks for breaking that down. I saw in the marketing materials that it said triple layer shock protection. So that explains it. And we're talking about an external drive that you would connect to, I'm assuming a PC or a Mac. I'm not sure if it's a full size USB A, uh, or if it also is there a, you know, a type C version. The idea is though, that you're shooting video, you're editing your content, and you want to back it up for safekeeping just in case something happens to the hard drive on the laptop itself. Is it just a matter of like dragging and dropping it over to that external drive and then putting that away? in your backpack or what have you? That's correct. Yeah. So it just really quickly, you get in there and you drag your files over to the drive to make sure you have that second copy of all of your valuable footage. Awesome. We're chatting with Christina Garza, Senior Manager of Global Product Marketing at G Technology, a Western digital brand that creates products like the Armor ATD drive, an external hard drive that's built to be super rugged for those on the go, especially for content creators. So YouTubers, I can see them in the field using something like this. Uh, could you actually edit it right off of the drive? I mean, is it fast enough? Maybe you can quantify it or do you, is it just for backing up and safekeeping? Yeah, absolutely. So our drives, you know, they go, they max out at about 140 megabytes per second. That's um, our up to transfer speed. So really, primarily, we built this product as backup. So it wasn't necessarily built as a an editing drive. However, if you're editing photos on the go um, and maybe smaller uh, resolution video, you can do it. You won't get the SSD speeds out right. of it, um, but you can you can edit photography off of this in lower resolution. Is it larger than other external hard drives? What are some of the differentiating features of this drive, aside from the durability, compared to other external hard drives? It is a little bit larger. Um, it will be a little bit bulkier than our non-rugged um, portable hard drive versions, mm -hmm. but that's really intended to make sure your data is protected. Right. You know, we're, We had to make it a little bit bigger to add on that rubber bumper and to make sure that we're able to secure the drive inside. And so as it is a little bit bigger, it does help with the ruggedness of the product itself. Can you clarify if indeed it does use USB type A or is it C, the, the smaller ones that are more common in today's laptops? Yep, it, it ships um, as a USB-C product. So you'll have a USB-C cable in there. It has that port um, on the drive itself, that interface. Mm -hmm. uh, but it does have a USB-A uh, adapter ah, so okay. that if you do have a computer that's a little older, there's an adapter that comes with the product to make sure that it's usable with your computer. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, it's also compatible with Thunderbolt 3. So that if you have a Thunderbolt 3 MacBook, let's say, um, it will work with that as well. Okay. So it works with Macs and Windows PCs. Uh, will it also work with Chromebooks? Yes. It comes formatted for XFAT. So you mm -hmm. don't need to reformat it for either of those. It'll, it should work out of the box with both PC and Mac. Plug and play. That's right. What capacities are available? We talked uh, earlier about SSD or, or solid state drives. They do offer a few benefits over an HDD or hard disk drive, but usually you get bet more storage when it comes to hard drives. So what are we looking at here with the Armor ATD? So we have Armor ATD comes in one, two, and four terabyte capacities. And so that four terabyte is exactly what you mentioned. It's giving you that high capacity and a very portable and very durable design. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, well, that you're not going to take too long to fill that up if you're shooting raw <laughs> format, you know, with an SLR camera. If you're a true, you know, photog in the field, you're going to need that kind of storage because you're not going to want to handpick those photos that you think you want at that point. You'll wait until you're back, you know, in your home or or office in order to look on a large, uh, larger screen, perhaps to decide on what is that magic shot, right? So the uh, the idea is that you just want to store it all. You look at it later. So you, you're going to want capacities as high as four terabytes which is about 4,000 gigs, which is amazing. And then how much are we talking about cost-wise for the Armour ATD? I think that our goal with this was to give you all of that incredible durability for an affordable price. So we're making sure that it's priced um, competitively so that, you know, you're not spending too much. So we start at one terabyte is $89.99. Oh, wow. The the two terabyte is $119.99. And then the four terabyte is one sixty nine ninety nine. So as you can see, it's definitely affordable when it comes to the high capacity that we're able to deliver with this. I love the blue finish on it, by the way. I know it's got that black rubber bumper, but that's a really cool blue. Yeah, you know, we wanted to create something that didn't feel like just an external hard drive, you know, make yeah. it feel cool that people will, will feel really good about it being on their desk, at, you know, whether they're in their office or at home or in a studio, we want it to make make sure, you know, we're, we're working with creators and they care about what their products look like and they pay attention to the way that they're designed and how they look when they're sitting next to their computers or in their offices or studios. And so we engineer and design them to make sure they fit really well into that creator's space. Yeah, it's a great point. Thank you so much, Christina Garza. Is there a website you'd recommend to learn more about not just the Armor ATD external hard drive, but other G Technology branded products? Yes, please visit gtechnology.com. That's g-technology.com. And you can learn all about our professional grade storage solutions. Okay. Awesome. Thanks again, Christina. All the best. Thank you so much. Well, I enjoyed that. Love their products. Thanks for listening to Tech It Out. We'll be right back. This show is powered by Asus. I'll tell you more about them later in the program as well. Stay with us. More Tech It Out coming right up. Listen to Tech It Out whenever you want. Find the Tech It Out podcast at iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Tech It Out, everyone. A few minutes from now on this program, we'll chat with Intel about what to look for when you're shopping for a new PC. We'll break down all the different components, the specs that may be overwhelming to you, things like CPU or processor, RAM or system memory, hard drive or solid state drive, graphics card, and so on and so forth. And as I mentioned earlier, on a related note, I wanted to share with you some of my favorite tech items for back to school. So last week on this program, I talked about some back-to-school tech items I showed on TV across the country, some recommended gadgets and gear for students of different ages, mostly middle school and high school, as well as into college and university. So I wanted to continue that discussion uh, with a couple of other additional items that I think make the grade, if you will. Let's start off with the Lenovo ThinkBook. You know, in the business world, the ThinkPad is an iconic device that fuses portability and security and performance, and this education focused think book is no exception this is a fantastic laptop that's made with aluminum and magnesium so it's durable but super light you won't even feel it in your backpack it boots up in just 0.5 seconds there's a little home button in the top right just underneath the screen so it boots up really quick and even when the lid is closed you're still going to get emails and app updates and other information from the internet pushed down to the device i really like that it has all the ports that you want to connect all your devices long battery life including a 13 and 14 inch screen that looks fantastic not just for your schoolwork but afterwards when you want to watch Netflix or Amazon Prime Video or you want to play Fortnite or any other game it's going to uh, serve as double duty so if you're in a dorm room this is an ideal device because it's for both work and play uh, very comfortable backlit keyboard the list goes on and on so prices start at about 650 for the Lenovo ThinkBook and it is for the 13 inch model and then prices go up from there if you want a little bit more horsepower under the hood or if you want a 14 inch screen and so on another product that I talked about was the new Samsung Galaxy Note 10 and the 10 plus this is a great tool for students 
students, especially older students, you've got a huge screen, 6.3 inches, absolutely stunning on the Note 10, and even better on the 10 Plus, 6.8 inches, the largest Galaxy Note ever to debut over the past many years. And it has just a small little camera cutout on the front center of the uh, screen. Everything else is all your content. So there's really nothing between you and what you're consuming, whether it's, again, for work or for play. So on the work side, you know one of the hallmarks of the Note isn't just a big screen and fast performance and a great battery, but also the S Pen. This is a stylus that's tucked underneath the Samsung Galaxy Note or the Note 10 Plus. You just pop it out. It's on a little spring. And then you can use it to write down notes during classes. So, you know, the uh, experts, the education experts say that we do retain information better if we handwrite notes. And now you can have it transcribed into text as well, sort of best of both worlds. So once it's digitized into text, you can then search by keyword. You can easily email it to somebody, edit it, and so on. And I love the new Air Actions, as it's called. So not only is the stylus wireless now, the S Pen, last year they introduced this uh, button press. So you can, for example, start a shutter or start a recording or timer or something like that. But now you can do gestures, kind of like a magic wand. By waving the S Pen in front of your device, you can do things like turn the camera around or switch between modes and then enable the shutter. So really, really handy stuff. I I love the fast charging. I love the long-lasting battery. It's got three cameras on the back, including one that's uh, wide angle. And then, of course, you know, the ability to do that live focus effect, that bokeh effect where you blur the background like those professional cameras. When you shoot video, it now has a boom mic built in. So there's just a lot to like about this new Galaxy Note 10 and 10 Plus. So really great stuff. Check it out at Samsung's website, and that's uh, available now starting at 949. And then I talked about Wi-Fi on TV and how we all are familiar with dead zones, those pockets of your home that don't get reliable Wi-Fi or any Wi-Fi at all. And often the students are complaining that they can't access the internet unless they're in one location or another. But that's now a thing of the past thanks to a technology called Mesh, which includes not just the router or the main brains of the unit, but also smaller hubs or access points that you would place around your home. And they all collectively make a digital handshake, a a wireless blanket for your entire home. So you're going to get fast and reliable Wi-Fi with just one network name. You're not going to have to uh, join a secondary network with, you know, dash EXT at the end or anything like that. What I showed on TV is the what I have in my home. It's the D-Link cover power zone mesh Wi-Fi system, which includes a tri-band or very powerful router. That's your main device that you connect to your modem and then smaller cover points that you place around your home. And out of the box, this three-pack is ideal for homes as large as 6,500 square feet. So no more dead zones, even if you have a large home like that, or if you want access to the internet outside, maybe in a backyard or a front porch, this D-Link Cover Power Zone three-pack will do the trick. And should you have even a larger home than that, lucky you, you can buy other cover points to augment it. But the core pack is, is all you need. There's parental controls. So moms or dads have a control center, if you will, right on the app on their phone so they can manage who's on the internet when and for how long and on what devices the kids uh, aren't uh, coming down for dinner turn off the wi-fi they'll be down pretty quickly you get the idea so it's called the d-link cover power zone mesh wi-fi system and this is a tri-band solution very fast the cost is 299 and the model number is cover dash r2203 So there's a look at three other items for back to school to finish off last week's chat. That's the Lenovo ThinkBook laptop. Then there's the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 or the Note 10 Plus smartphone. And then the D-Link Cover Power Zone mesh Wi-Fi system. Before we head into a short break and then chat with Hotels.com about that contest and what's cool with their app, I do want to also acknowledge and thank Western Digital. They were a guest on first on this program. We chatted about their super rugged G-Technology branded Armor ATD portable hard drive designed for those looking for a durable drive to bring on the go, especially for content creators like photographers and videographers. Head over to g-technology.com for more. Hang tight. We'll be right back with more Tech It Out. Want to follow Mark? Google him. Mark with a C and Saltzman with a Z. Breaking down geek speak into street speak. This is Tech It Out. Tech It Out with technology columnist, author, and TV personality, Mark Saltzman. 
Tis the season for travel, and of course, you want to find great deals on hotels. Whether it's a popular chain, maybe it's a boutique place, maybe a resort, or even a private residence that you may want to rent for a couple of days. And the app I always use for business and pleasure is Hotels.com. In fact, I'm thrilled to partner with them on a huge giveaway for August and September, which I'll remind you about momentarily. And joining us on the line to talk about Hotels.com and its great app, we're joined by Josh Belkin. He's the Vice President of Global brand at Hotels.com. Welcome to the show, Josh. Thanks so much for having me, Mark. Great to chat with you again. Yeah, I should say welcome back to the show. In fact, I had you on about 18 months ago, and then your colleague Katie Juno on last summer. So pleasure to chat with you again. Let's just start right from the top. So what is the app and the website all about? Hotels.com. Absolutely. So Hotels.com is a global leader in finding a place to stay. And our goal is making it the most rewarding possible experience start to finish. We know that so many people find planning uh, a getaway stressful. So our job is to make it as simple and easy as possible. We know uh, a lot of people spend over 15 hours trying to find that perfect place. So we have a variety of tools to help connect you with uh, a wide range of choices of places to stay and then reward you for that Mm -hmm. uh, and go enjoy your trip. The rewards program is awesome. So first of all, back on pricing, one of the things that I like best about Hotels.com is finding a great deal on a hotel room. For example, my wife Kelly and I just booked two nights in Chicago for a wedding we're attending in September. And my brother-in-law just spent more than me for that same hotel, same room and same dates, but using a different app. I really like the rewards program. So maybe you can let us know a bit about that. Absolutely. So not only are you getting uh, the better price than your brother-in-law, you're also (laughs) going to be earning in that example, two nights towards that reward night. So when you stay 10 nights, you get a reward night. And the beauty of it is that reward night Uh, You can use pretty much anywhere around the world, hundreds of thousands of properties. So you can mix and match the places and types of properties that you stay and redeem wherever you'd like. So you're not really tied down to a particular location, a particular chain, really simple and easy to use. And we think quite generous. And that's what we hear from our customers. All right. So you stay 10 nights and then you get another one for free. And the is it does it average out the price that you pay per room to tell you what that credit is worth, if you will? That's how I think it it operates. Exactly. So you can follow your progress on the website or in our app, and the reward night that you'll receive is worth the average of what you paid for the prior 10. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're you're a high roller and you're always staying in five-star hotels, you'll be able to redeem that for reward night at a five-star hotel. And if you're staying somewhere uh, more budget-minded, you'll be able to redeem a reward night accordingly as well. Awesome. Now, Hotels.com has been around for more than 25 years, if I'm not mistaken, first as a phone service in the early 90s, then on the web, then now you added a great app and even things like smartwatch support. So no doubt you've seen technology play a key role in your growth and success. Why is technology important to a company like Hotels.com? Yeah, that's right. We're, we're over 25 years old now, which is a very long time in internet years. And we've really seen an evolution of the business going from what was originally a call center type operation where we we're answering the phones and booking uh, reservations for people that way to so much of our business now happening on uh, apps and smartphones and tablets and watches. Uh, over 50 percent of our traffic now is coming through on those devices. And it's an increasingly popular way for people to book. So, of course, on a mobile phone, for example, where the screen size is much smaller than uh, a desktop computer, we know the experience has to even be that much more simpler, intuitive, and easy. We're chatting with Josh Belkin, Vice President of Global Brand at Hotels.com. About the app, you know, I know there's a lot of features baked into it, including things like maps and, and places to see. We have our entire repository of properties of all types around the world available in the app. So uh, the filters for me are one of my favorite features. So you can quickly filter down those properties. Let's say I'm going to Paris uh, for a trip and I want to stay perhaps not at a hotel, but stay at a vacation rental. I can filter and see just our vacation rental properties in Paris. If I want to stay at more of a bed and breakfast, I can filter and do that. If I want to look for a certain theme of property, something maybe it's family friendly or pet friendly 
all of those are options in the app to help turn lots and lots of choices into the most relevant ones for me very quickly. Awesome. I want to remind our listeners that Hotels.com and this radio show and podcast, Tech It Out, they're giving away a $250 Hotels.com gift card every week. That's one per week for eight weeks. And all you have to do to be eligible for the weekly random draw is to A, follow Hotels.com on Twitter, B, tweet why you deserve a free night or two in a hotel, and C, add the hashtag Tech It Out. That's it. So follow Hotels.com on Twitter. Tweet why you'd love a free night in a hotel or more than one night. And then add the hashtag Tech It Out one word. And then we are randomly drawing a name every week. You need to be at least 18 years old and a legal resident of the U.S. to be eligible. So good luck to you. Josh, tell us about the Hotels.com reviews. The one thing that attracted me to this site and app is how you handle reviews. There's no shortage of fake reviews on other travel sites. What do you do as a company to minimize these phony reviews that we may read? Absolutely. Reviews are a huge part of buying, I think, any product, particularly online nowadays, but travel being such a high consideration purchase, people absolutely care about reviews. Uh, We have over 25 million genuine guest reviews on our site and in our app. And the reason we call them genuine is we can assure you that they were left by people that absolutely stayed at that property. Awesome. All right. Love that. Josh, is there a website you'd recommend? Is it simply Hotels.com or would you just suggest to download the app to your favorite mobile device? You should absolutely do both. Hotels.com in your browser and we're available in the App Store. And you can sign into the same account both on the web as well as on a tablet or a smartphone. So all your reservations and everything like that, your rewards, it's all synchronized. Absolutely. One account links it all together and absolutely sign up for the rewards program and start earning those reward nights. All right. Well, I don't want to sound like Captain Obvious, but that was a fun interview. So thank you. (laughs) Thanks so much, Josh. Have a great rest of your summer. Josh Belkin, VP of Global Brand at Hotels.com. It's been good chatting with you. Thank you, Mark. I'll tell you the name of our first of eight winners after this next break. But first, the show, Tech It Out, is powered by Asus. Asus creates technology for today and tomorrow's smart life, including its line of award-winning laptops, desktops, monitors, smartphones, tablets, smartwatches, and much more. For those in search of incredible, visit asus.com slash us slash radio for more info. That's A-S-U-S dot com forward slash us forward slash radio. Radio. We'll be right back with more Tech It Out. Breaking down geek speak into street speak. Tech It Out. Hosted by Mark Saltzman. Welcome back to Tech It Out. When it comes to tech, there's what I would call a need to have and a nice to have. And with all of the technology available for students today, I'd argue that a laptop is the most critical tool in their arsenal. But how do you know which one to invest in? Shopping for a new computer can be an overwhelming and intimidating experience. And so to help us decide what to look for, we're joined by Lisa McManus. She's an account executive at Intel and a regular guest on this program. Welcome back to the show, Lisa. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having me. It's an exciting time back to school. Everyone's getting pumped for it. Well, you know, cue the eye rolling for the students, but uh, (laughs) pop the champagne for the parents. But at the very least, there's some cool tech to help uh, students ease back into the classroom. So where does one start? If someone said to you, hey, Lisa, I know you work for Intel. What kind of a computer should I buy? How do you answer a generic question like that? Yeah, you know, I think, Mark, it's it's really the question is who's asking, right, and what's the use going to be? So if the student needs something mobile on the go, then we'd be, you know, obviously recommending something that is a notebook, a thin and light um, mobile device that's easy to carry around, has great battery life and enough power for whatever they're doing in computing. If it's someone that's at home and is looking to share a device with a family, you know, I might lean a little more towards potentially a desktop that's, you know, fixed and has a, a you know, robustness around the, the use model. Uh, so it really depends what the use is. That's mm-hmm. the first thing I'd say. Is it to sit still or is it to move? So form factor is the first decision you need to make. And I would agree with you, by the way. In fact, I often say desktops are ideal for young 
younger kids, for younger students, because they're less prone to damage since they're not portable. You can put them in a highly trafficked area of the home so mom or dad can keep an eye on where they're going online. And because they are a desktop with larger components, often they're a little bit less expensive than a laptop. And if it's your first computer, that might be the way to go. But I like the portability that a laptop affords, of course, for older students. Yeah, I think, you know, and it's as, as we see more and more and the, the a devices, you know, Mark, are getting more and more sleek and thin and light and they're they're really beautiful devices. But it's not just the beauty of it, but it's the power, you know, mm-hmm. in the past where you may have to give up a little bit of power for the thin and light. You don't have to do that anymore because, the, the, you know, the developments at Intel we made around the CPUs and the performance for thin and light devices. A lot of the new movement to SSD from a hard drive, mm-hmm. SSD is a solid state drive which allows you know a fanless design which means it's a little thinner it's a little lighter it's silent so there's a lot of those types of changes that sort of drive what folks could are seeing out there today and an ssd or solid state drive opposed to a hard drive or hdd it's also less taxing on the battery since there's no moving parts you can also squeeze more life out of that laptop which is so critical uh compared to a hard drive which has a you know it's a spinning disc so it does consume more power and is a little bit more prone to damage so i i prefer ssd as well i'm glad we're aligned there yeah, no, you know, and you're going to see a lot more designs with SSD, and it's always a bit of a challenge with a, a it, not that it's a new technology, but for the folks that are doing shopping, they're probably used to their hard drive looking for what they know, eight gigabyte, one terabyte hard drive. Now we've got in the market four um, gigabyte and a 128 SSD, right, or a eight two fifty six SSD. So there's a lot more choice, but it can be a little bit confusing to the shopper. Mm-hmm. But the upside is. It's more powerful, it's faster, it's lighter, um, and you know, a, and it really sort of enhances your experience in computing. Mm-hmm. So Lisa, since we've got you on the line, what I would love to do, and I don't think we've done this in prior interviews, is sort of break down some of these components or specs that you, we've been talking about, kind of almost like a glossary, if you will, because I think parents are o- overwhelmed with uh, these decisions and they and they don't know where to start. So we've talked about storage, which is uh, SSD or a hard drive. The higher the number, the more files you can store. But I would argue the, the brains of the computer or the engine that drives the computer's performance is also very, very important. And that's, I think, where Intel comes in as well. So that's the CPU, as you mentioned, or central processing unit. Talk to us about how to decide which one is for you. I know there's like Core i3, Core i5, Core i7. Where do you start? You know, you're right, Mark. There's lots on the market and it is a bit confusing. So no one should ever feel, you know, uh, worried about asking in questions when they're shopping from a from a processor perspective we actually start from a chromebook design which generally has celeron or pentium processors up to a core i3 as you mentioned i5 i7 and i9 we always say a good place for a um, sort of a advanced a little more advanced user is a core i5 is a great place to start you've got the power that you need and also the um, flexibility to add programs or as you develop more software or use more software it's a a little more flexible um, for the high-end guys there's amazing core i7s and, a, and core i9s out there for folks that are really compute intensive which means they could be doing gaming they could be doing creating but a lot of um, heavy software so it's quite a broad lineup but there's everything everything's out there for every user Okay, so the processor or CPU is one of the specs you'll be looking for. Uh, It starts with Celeron or Pentium on the low end, and that is more for, uh, and I say low end of price, and that's more for basic tasks like web browsing, email, social media, word word processing, that kind of thing. And then you move up into the core family. I I often recommend to start at i5 as a minimum because you are future-proofing your investment. Should you need to run applications that are a little bit more memory intensive, you've got that. That, uh, that processing power there. Or if you're into gaming or video editing or animation, you'd move up into a core i7 or maybe an i9. We'll continue our chat with Intel after this short break, but just a quick reminder of our huge contest with Hotels.com. And the winner, by the way, of the first week is Tara Vacanti, who describes herself as a Nebraska girl living in Columbia, South Carolina. Congratulations to you. You also can be eligible to win a $250 Hotels.com gift card. If you're a legal U.S. resident who's at least 18, here's how to enter. Go to Twitter and follow Hotels.com. Send a tweet to them as to why you can use a free stay in a hotel and include the hashtag TechItOut. We'll randomly draw another winner and read it on the air next weekend. 
We'll be right back with more Tech It Out. You're listening to the Radio American Network. Stay with us. Follow Mark Saltzman on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Listen to Tech It Out whenever you want. joined by Lisa McManus, account executive at Intel. We're talking how to shop for a back-to-school PC. So, Lisa, we've covered CPU or processor. We've talked about storage, SSD, trumping HDD, if you can. We've talked about form factor, deciding between a laptop or a desktop. But what about RAM or system memory? What would be the minimum amount you'd recommend if someone is shopping for a new computer? And it's been a few years. Yeah, I think that, um, again, it's uh, if we look at RAM, in terms of if you have a hard drive, I would recommend an eight gigabyte RAM and, you know, with the, that one um, terabyte hard drive. However, if you're looking at SSD, you can maybe potentially do a four gigabyte to an eight gigabyte. So that's what I would recommend. The other thing I want to mention, Mark, is, is Intel's introduced sort of a state of the art technology around memory called Intel Optane memory. Mm-hmm. Um, we have two forms. One is um, a 16 gigabyte Optane memory. And what that does is is basically speeds up the elements of RAM. So it's sort of like a, a memory that remembers what you do all the time. It's it's non-volatile, which means it doesn't get erased. So the more you use systems and programs, this particular type of memory remembers that and speeds up the process for you. The other one I want to mention is the Intel Optane H10 memory. And this is basically an Optane memory plus an Intel SSD. So super designed for thin and light, amazing performance. And it's it always in loads of great form factors, like you mentioned. Okay. Cool. So that's a memory accelerator called Intel Correct. Optane, O-P-T-A-N-E. And then finally, let's chat about video, video graphics. Um, I often say if you're going to play games, then you want a dedicated graphics card, maybe from the likes of NVIDIA. And uh, that can also be upgraded if it's a desktop. Uh, but there's also onboard graphics, which might be fine for, for everyday use, right? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, again, you had mentioned NVIDIA makes a great lineup of products and tends to be what the gamers would want in their devices because they're discrete graphics. But we do have Intel um, graphics as well, which is excellent performance for everyday use. And and that's like right on the motherboard. It's not a separate card or anything, right? Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's an integrated design. And then finally, Lisa, you know, I know you work with several vendors, right? There's Asus, Lenovo, Dell, HP, Acer, Microsoft, Apple. If someone said to you, what brand do I invest in? You know, I don't know how you answer that. I usually say, well, stick with one that you've had, you know, a good experience with or do your research. How do you, I know you can't choose between your children, if you will. <laughs> uh, but uh, so what, what do you say about brands? Because that seems to be the question I get more often than even things like processor or more or memory. What brand should I get? You know, I think it, it really is about what your personal look and, and feel is. Like, you know, do you have a personal brand and then you associate with something that makes you happy? Then by all means, go with it. Because the reality is all our partners make phenomenal devices. They're continually um, investing in research and development to bring you these great models, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it be Chromebook designs or thin and light or desktop, I think that it, I, I think there's no fault with any brand. So I think whatever makes you happy from an aesthetic perspective, and as long as you have that right setup that we talked about with you know an eighth or ninth uh, generation Intel CPU and the right amount of memory for what your use is, you're going to be happy. All right. And then is there a website, Lisa, where people can maybe see some back to school information or yes, you know, just a bre- breakdown of the different laptops and desktops available? Yeah, I'd say go to intel.com and there's loads of information around the processors, around some of the technologies we discussed, and also information on our partners and what's on offer this, this back to school season. If it's been a few years since you've bought a PC, you're going to be blown away at how far they've come in such a short amount of time in terms of power, in terms of thin and lightness, and and some extra bells and whistles like touch and stylus pen and voice support and all this other great stuff. So Lisa, thanks so much for your time. Lisa McManus, account executive at Intel. Have a great rest of your summer and happy back to school season. Yeah, thank you, Mark. You too. Enjoy the travels. I'm sure you'll be busy. 
Indeed. Indeed. It is that time of year where I'm uh, doing a lot of work tied to back to school. Hope you enjoyed today's program. We talked with Western Digital about their new Armor ATD ruggedized hard drive. I shared with you some back to school picks, including a new computer, a new mesh Wi-Fi system and a smartphone from Samsung. Speaking of back to school, Intel just joined us to talk about what to look for when shopping for a back to school computer. And then finally, we caught up with Hotels.com to learn more about their new app, Smartwatch Support. And of course, we talked about that contest. Congratulations once again to Tara Vacanti, the first of eight winners of a $250 Hotels.com gift card. I'll announce the second winner next week. And Tara, by the way, didn't hear the full Tech It Out show on her local radio station. Instead, she heard the Tech It Out Minute or an interstitial on Sirius XM's Radio Classics. That's station 144. And that is how she heard about this contest. But you're still eligible to win by going to Twitter, following Hotels.com, and then tweet why you deserve a break, a free stay in a hotel by including the hashtag tech it out. Thank you to Asus, the title sponsor on this program, creating technology for today and tomorrow's smart life. Visit asus.com slash us slash radio for more info. Have a great rest of your weekend, everyone. We'll catch up with you next time on Tech It Out. Bye-bye for now.